time for us to start. Um, I, if other people come in, you know, just to acknowledge them and keep on going. Don't worry about it. Thanks for coming over for this afternoon. I think all of you, maybe Michelle is new here for knowing the routine, but these are interns and they have to give a formal presentation. And we try to assemble a group of folks that they can present to. So this is Justin. He's been serving this semester. Of the meeting now. Okay, well, I just want to start off by thanking you all for coming. It's kind of a you know, lazy Friday afternoon. You guys also showed up, so thank you for that. Uh, as I'm sure you know, this presentation is about my internship that I had this summer. There were a few different parts of the internship. One was a job shadowing with computer services, but another part was a project that we had to do. Uh, and then there was also a paper, and in this presentation, I went along with it. That's a minimum. 120 hours total. The job shadowing was a minimum of 80, while the project would spend a minimum of 40 hours working on it. Uh, so let's go ahead and start off by talking about my job shadowing experience. Uh, well, for starters, before the semester even started, I was kind of terrified about that part because all I thought going into it was this is going to be a lot of troubleshooting and a lot of networking, and I did not know either of those very well at all, and I was kind of horrified about it. Um, but you know, we sat down and got our schedule made, and the first day I went in there and was under Justin Martin while he was still here, and uh, he did really well just like in introducing me to the, uh, just the area of computer services and to all the employees down there and just how things worked, and he didn't send me off on anything crazy like to begin with, and so it was just really helpful. Uh, every time he would go out and do something, he would get a ticket in, um, and or get a call to go help someone who, you know, take me with him, show me, and I just like, just watching how he interacted with other people and watching how, you know, they interacted with him and how he solved the problems that they had with either giving a lot of information or not a lot of information at all, just really helped me learn and understand kind of more of the IT industry and just how it works in general. Uh, he also did a great job introducing me to the Windows deployment server, which is what computer services uses, uh, and just how, I guess the main thing when you walk into the back room is that you see it just a computer monitor set up and then a KVM switch and this big stand full of computers. Uh, sometimes it's full of computers, I guess now it's probably not at the end of the semester. But, so that also gave me an introduction to a KVM switch, which is keyboard, video, and mouse. Basically you just have one keyboard, video, uh, monitor, and then one mouse. And it hooks up to this device, which then hooks up to uh, many computers. I think which in there is 24 switches about. Um, maybe more, maybe less, I don't remember exactly. But basically you just press a button or select from a menu of which computer you want to hook up to and you're able to connect to that one. Uh, so that introduction to that was nice and being able to use that and seeing how they image computers and how they set up the computers to be able to use in all the classrooms. And if it's going to be a classroom computer, an office computer, or you know, whatever that. Um, I was also introduced to a server room. Uh, I kind of seen a server room on our field trip that we took uh, to St. Louis. But seeing well, the one on campus was really helpful and just how everything's set up in there, how cool it was in there, both temperature wise. I mean, everything has to be kept you know, at a certain temperature so nothing overheats. Um, yeah, so that was interesting also being able to make cables. Interesting thing was I was going through my networking class at the same time doing this internship. So a lot of things went hand in hand. Like one day I had to sit in the server room and make a bunch of cables with Veloge. And then later that week, Mrs. Todd assigns our cable making assignment. I'm like, oh, I just did this. And made a ton of cables the other day. I've got to make more. But so, uh, so that was interesting. Part of the way through the semester, Justin Martin put in his two weeks. And then after that, I was under Jeremy the rest of the time. And I kind of knew that things were going to change, you know, getting one less person in there. Obviously, wouldn't have enough like manpower to send out multiple people on the one assignment. So I was kind of, kind of afraid again. Oh no, I'm gonna get sent on my own and not know how to do things. Uh, but the experience earlier in the semester really, really helped. And so whenever Jeremy uh, assigned different assignments to me, I was able to go down, you know, go in the RPEC for a few hours and set up the computers and troubleshoot whatever was going wrong with any of the computers down there, being classroom or computers with the same number or somehow their name is the same. So and just being able to solve that was, a, was really 
helpful. So overall, that experience was really awesome. I went in terrified and came out pretty confident that I could do a decent amount of what people asked. I was able to respond to people and their problems, whether they knew what they were or not. Um, a lot of times that would happen with just, hey, we have a problem, no idea what it is, so come solve it. And so by the end of the semester, I was able to, to be able to solve a lot of the problems and understand what they were talking about. Uh, the second portion of the internship uh, was the internship project, which is probably what most of the people here were actually looking forward to seeing. So at the beginning of the semester, we all sat down in a meeting and tried to decide what, by we I mean our interns and the computer professors, Mr. Todd and Dr. Nelson, uh, and tried to decide what project we could do. We always like to choose something that could be helpful to the school in some way. Um, and so that was, I guess, what we were looking towards. Uh, and I'd always wanted to get into mobile development, whether it be Android or Apple, or just something that could put on a tablet, an application that could put on a tablet or a phone. That would be cool. And Dr. Nelson came up with the idea of uh, being able to have some sort of uh, sports scores um, uploaded or something to do with the handle of Green Athletics uh, to be able to sort of like a, an application that students could download and be able to see what's going on uh, with our athletics. Uh, it started out kind of a much bigger idea of athletics and maybe a, a calendar, like a menu for fresh ideas here and then also a student calendar. Uh, but quickly after kind of getting into that, I realized that that was pretty big and I wasn't going to be able to, to complete all of that going in with no knowledge and mobile applications or uh, Java at all or just much programming language at all. Uh, so it ended up being more of a, a sports news aggregator for uh, Hannibal LaGrange. Um, also, so I had the decision to pick between Android and Apple. The reason I chose Android was well, first of all, I have an Android phone, so I knew I'd be able to test it um, on my phone, uh, and I didn't have an Apple device, so that would be much harder like that. Also, I'm going through a Java class right now. I knew Android was written in Java, and I also found out it's also written in XML for design. Um, and then the third reason was just because it costs money to develop for Apple, and I don't have that much money. So, <laughs> so I decided to go with Android, uh, and going through like I said, I kind of went into this with no no real knowledge. I had a little bit of programming experience from Python, of course, I had last semester. Uh, but most of this came brand new to me. Um, thankfully, as I got into it, I discovered that this here is called Android Studio. It's a, kind of the IED, or just the development interface that Google uh, presents for its Android developers. Uh, kind of looking at it, it looks like a lot, and it was pretty overwhelming at first be honest. Uh, but once you get into it, it's fairly simple to just be able to like, create a new project. And then this is the project that I created, so I already had it up here. Uh, and then I had to look through many tutorials online to try to be able to both develop the application and find out how to pull um, information. Uh, so the way I decided to pull information was, well, first of all, I guess, attempted to be able to go and get into how the athletics store their information, just to be able to directly pull from there. Uh, and they use a, an outside company, and we needed more, I guess you have to pay for like a gold package to be able to access all that stuff. Um, and also they could uh, create a mobile app for you, uh, but we hadn't done that, so I was unable to access that data. But what I did find is on the athletic website, go to the bottom here, click on RSS feeds, and I found which an RSS feed, I don't remember exactly what it stands for, but it just pulls the, um, the news feeds that it has. So it would pull, like that main feed there would come in and pull these four, and then come down here and start pulling the recent headlines, uh, and ended up pulling up to 15 of them. The XML file itself is just right here. So what I ended up doing is going in and just pulling this information, basically just using the links and stuff. I found a YouTube tutorial for, that was helpful in guiding me through it, although his, his example was much simpler, and so it took a while to be able to associate that. So pulling that over here, 
the Android. I'm not necessarily going to explain all of it, but you can kind of see what went into it. A lot of coding, a lot of specifying comments, telling you like what the code does itself, a lot of different pages of code. Um, so in the end, uh, I guess I'll mention this. Uh, Studio also has an emulator, so it, it starts like a version, an Android phone on the computer when you run it. So I was able to do that, and I pulled that up already. So this was the Android phone that I had, and it, it installs the application that you built onto the phone already. So this is as if it was a real Android phone. You can go to the menu here, and I, uh, I pulled this image from just the website, and I resized it to, I think it has to be four different sizes. Android detects if it's a tablet or what size screen you're using. Uh, so you use this, click on it, and it pulls the like I said, uh, so the first few are, if you remember, were the like two baseball things, women's golf, and the baseball article, and it pulled that directly from the website. Uh, baseball article, you can scroll down, you click on them, it will take you to the HLG website's uh, mobile form, mobile site, I guess, and give you the article. File it pulled up to 15, I think, is what it is. Uh, so there's that. Uh, yeah, I also created uh, through the help of the Android Studio. And these these other functions, I will admit, aren't completely functional, but I figured I'd leave them on here because they can show what more this application can do than just simply this. For example, I had an idea of adding uh, more than just a uh, content aggregator, but also linking to uh, the different websites or the different um, athletic teams. So they would be able to like come in here. Right now, I'm just listed section one. You use the navigation bar and go down to, like I say, men's volleyball. If you want to look at men's volleyball, you know, you click on them, get their sports updates, look at scores, uh, be able to search through here if you like. Yep. So that's essentially what my project consisted of. Um, it was a huge learning experience. It ended up taking far more than 40 hours. Uh, like I said, just because I had no experience in it and I had to learn how to do all of this. Honestly, if I had to recreate this, if somehow this file was completely lost, I could probably do it maybe uh, far less time. But just the learning experience, uh, I think it was definitely worth it. That's it. Uh, anybody have any questions? Uh, does that work on your actual phone? Obviously it works yes, on an emulator. Yes, it does. It works on my actual phone. I have it installed. Um, I can actually pass this around if you would like me to.
probably be, I don't know if I can narrow it down, but be all just the experience that, uh, like how much more I know about Java and how to just develop programs in general. Um, I learned, I mean, you always hear that you have to tell it exactly step by step what to do, but you don't necessarily think of how long that process is until you actually do it. Like just pulling this simple XML file, like, oh, okay, so I'm just going to download this, and then it's going to read the tags, and then it's going to put it in that place. But that is, let's see, this is the download, just to download it, and like, this is what edits out the tags and defines which, what is what, and then here's how you put it into the main activity to actually display it. So. It was a lot more than I thought it was. Also, I found out that the website Stack Overflow programming website, just for questions and help, is my best friend. Because they have seemingly have answers to everything. Problems with the varying versions of Android available? Did you attempt to make it work for a certain target platform? And yes. Or so lots of them? That's a good thing to bring up. I forgot to mention that. When you first begin your project in Android Studio, it actually tells you about the different levels of uh, Android. I mean, everyone knows iPhones are kind of all on the same thing, but Android is, is very fragmented. So they give you a percentage of, if you design your device for Android 4.1, there's, I think it was 91% of the devices could run at least 4.1. So it's kind of like, it lets you choose where you want to go with it. It tells you like, obviously more features are available, higher up you go, but less people can use them the higher up you go. So I went with 4.1 because it was a good like 91%, then 